I'm like a Dutch uncle here. <laughs> I get to see the kids from third grade right up to eighth grade. I get to do whatever I want with them musically. There's nobody to yell at but me. I, I am the music person here, the instrumental person, so I literally do things. I've done some odd things over the years simply because it fits the kids that I'm doing that I know I would never be able to do someplace else if I was part of a department. So I feel very blessed for that. I really, I truly do. I mean, I know all the kids. I mean, I walked through the, you know, that, that's, you know. I remember when I was at the, the high school that I was, at middle school that I was teaching in um, Williamsburg, there was, what, 2,000 kids? I barely knew the 50 kids that I had. Here, you know, I know them all. And they, you know, again, I have that trust. And that trust, to me, is a privilege, something I won't abuse with the kids ever. This female trumpet player is super thankful for learning from only the best, Mr. Nasa, the best, goofiest, most wonderful teacher that I think I ever had. Thank you, Mr. Nasa, for including everybody in your drum lessons. I'm Clive Shermer, and Nasta has been a really crucial part of my Haworth experience. He taught me how to play clarinet for five years, and in those five years, he also taught me how to play the bass. And I just loved going into his room and just spending time with my friends and with him and just talking about stuff for hours. I was a dummy as far as music goes. I taught myself how to play an instrument. Uh, I had an Uncle Pete. My Uncle Pete, I've never met him. He was my, my grandfather's brother. But I always heard stories of him. He, he was able to pick up any string instrument and play it just by using his ear. I have the same ability with wind instruments. I can sit there and, I mean, I, I'm a trumpet player, but if I listen to a clarinet player play, I can hear what they're doing wrong. It's just something inside me tells me what it is. So all the kids that play all the different instruments here, you're teaching them each of these yeah, different instruments. Yeah, with the exception of the string players. Since I was in conservatory and I was around players, I would sit down with a guy who was a clarinet player and say, show me how to play it. I do it in alto sax with oboe. You know, String instruments, forget about it. I was terrible with them. Who teaches string? Well, here, I start them. And then they either get a private teacher, or we're very fortunate. There are people in town that play in the Philharmonic, right. and, the, and they come in, and they bail me out. <laughs> okay. So how many instruments are you capable I'm of I'm capable of playing. playing. I can play any instrument that's in the room. Not like I play the trumpet. I can play like someone who's in fourth grade. Hi, Mr. Nasta. It's Natsumi. I never would have thought that I'd be able to send you a message like this after 20 plus years. But here I am with my two beautiful daughters and our cockatiel. Um, <laughs> I just want to thank you for all that you did for us back in Haworth. I hope you're doing well, and I wish you all the best. Now I'll pass it over to Yayoi. Hi, Mr. Nasta. This is Yayoi. I have a son now. Thank you so much for the great experience 20 years ago. I miss you so much. Mr. Nasta, you're the best. I love taking music and trumpet with you, and I've learned so much from your classes. When I decided to go to college, my folks didn't have any money, really. And I happened to um, go for a lesson with this guy called Pee Wee Irwin, who was a Dixieland trumpet player. He lived in Teaneck. And he gave me a couple lessons. I had no idea that you had to audition for a music school. I got this letter back from Manus College of Music where I went to for an audition. I had no idea. I thought you just applied like every other college. So Pee Wee gives me lessons a whole bit. I get into Manus, and about six months into the school, Pee Wee calls me up and says, do you, I'm going to go back on the road to play. Do you want my students? So Dummy goes, yeah, fine, OK? So I go in there. They all quit. Who wants to study with me? I am nobody, OK? But that's how I started teaching. It was a, a studio in Teaneck. I love how Mr. Nasta teaches us in a way that allows us to have fun while still learning. We love Mr. Nasta. Remembering how as a elementary school kid, I expressed some interest in jazz and you uh, put some opportunities for us to, to try playing a little bit of music. And here I am years later and I've been a professional jazz musician for a lot of years now, composing, arranging, playing the bass clarinet. So thank you for being a a part of that journey for me. And Bill went 
to me. I said, you know, blah, 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 you know, about the job, the whole bit. And I said to him, Bill, to be honest with you, no, Dr. Dorney, I know the school's reputation. You're never going to give me tenure. I need a real job. I promise I'll spend, I'll stay here for, it, for the year. So if something comes up, I will take it next year. And he said, I was here. Um, my, my idea is to change, you know, the whole culture of the school, and he did. You know, I mean, he really brought the school up to a really great place. for many years. I started working at the school in 1970. I understand Vito came in 1980. We become good friends. He used to call me Flory after a jazz singer. We finally settled on Flossie anyway. Um, you know, the word nice sometimes is overused, but it is a truly good description of Vito. He is a nice person, plus a talented musician, he takes the young people and he, they've probably never seen a clarinet or a saxophone and he turns them into musicians. And he's just a wonderful, wonderful person. He's Hallworth's own music man. When you see a kid, like, like when junior band plays, they start in September, they can't even hold the instrument right. And then it comes around to May where they're actually playing something. And you can see the, the happiness in their, you know, in their eyes. And it brings me back to when I was a kid. I mean, my, my, when I used to play in bands, I, I was like in a different world. I loved it. I mean, when I play, I'm a totally different person. My band director used to tell me, though, he says, you hide behind your instrument. And I didn't understand what he meant at the beginning, but now I do understand it. And I am, there's things, I feel things that I don't, could never feel, express myself in a way I can't express. I just, I've always loved music. Is this your favorite trumpet? Yeah, this is my, this is the one that my teacher sold me. This is actually made in 1932. It's a French person. It's a handmade trumpet. Where's it yeah. from? It's from France. Uh, my teacher, Pee Wee, when I, again, my, um, Pee Wee or one? Pee Wee or one. I didn't have, I didn't come from a lot of money. Pee Wee lent me this one to do my audition. And then, um, he said, what are you going to do? And I said, I don't know, I'm going to buy a trumpet. So he sold this to me for what he bought it for in 1932, which was $200. This trumpet's worth about two to three grand. Okay. He's a great guy. He was just really phenomenal. And this is the Vito Nasty trumpet. This is it. This is mine. Hello, this is Kathleen Duty, class of 88 sending in my video to say thank you to Mr. Vito Nasta for the best memories from Howard School for those nine years. I couldn't be more grateful. Thank you for helping to build confidence in all of us Howard kids. And thank you for bringing us the love of music. Your passion was always so easy to see through all the sweat and all the concerts and all the hard work and all the energy, and you always put 100% into all of us, and we always tried to give you 100% back. And I'll never forget, here I am all these years later, and still smiling and so grateful we had you in our lives. Vito had the most rare and amazing ability to connect with kids. You know, he wasn't your typical teacher who was up on a pedestal. He came down to our level and just related to us as people, most of all. And everyone loved him for that. Kids would walk in like, in the middle of class. And I used to have it years ago, particularly with the boys, middle school boys. They're a little frustrated all the time. So I had to deal with them. They could walk into the room. They could bang on the drum set for 30 seconds. Go wherever you want and then tell me what's wrong. If you don't tell me what's wrong, you can't bang on the drum set. So they would come in, they would beat the thing up, and they would tell me what's wrong. 
One of my favorite traits that Vito possesses is his ability to connect with the middle school students. They love him. He is always able to help them through any problems or difficulties they're experiencing. He is a middle school whisperer. First is Chuck, then Vio, second, and first, and then everybody else. You guys ready? When I was in college, in the conservatory, I knew I wanted to teach. Okay, it was was the one thing I really wanted to do because I I was playing professionally outside. I'm not only with Pee Wee. I met some other professional people, and they were miserable. I mean, I was on stage with Dizzy Gillespie, and he's a great guy, but he's miserable. And I remembered who's the one person in my life that smiled all the time. It's my high school band director. I don't remember this guy ever not smiling. So I honestly, I said to my, this is what I want to do. I mean, I have this weird analogy that I tell of the players. When you're a professional player and you're doing well, everybody loves you until you're too old to play, okay? Then they forget about you. A year and a half later, two years, you're nothing. Mr. Sakis, my band director, will be in my heart till the day I die. Bill Dorney will be in my heart till the day I die, okay? A famous past their death, and hopefully I'll be like that with these kids. They all gave me a recorder for third grade, and I work with whoever's vocal teacher is, and I go in and I teach them, record it to them, and I show them instruments. But third grade is where it starts, and in fourth grade, they volunteered to be part of the program. So it's not mandatory, but I normally get, I'd say anywhere between 50 and 60 percent of the kids in fourth, in fourth grade. But our biggest problem is this is a small school. So a lot of times I'll buy a piece of music and I'll have to write some parts, because we don't have a tuba, we don't have five trombones, we're not big enough for it. We're just not, you know? So working with the size of school, that has to be a challenge. It, it is, it is. But that's also the fun part, to try and make it work. We're too small a school to schedule a band rehearsal. And you know, the only time I can do that is a week before the concert. And again, I'm competing with math and science and everything else. Because the pullout is, it's, it, I, I try and schedule through the um, classes, but I invariably hit math, I invariably hit science. So this week I may see a full group of, say, seven trumpet players. Next week I'll only see two of them because the rest of them are in math. But it, it's a problem during the pullout. It's also a problem rehearsing at lunch. I rehearse during the recess, you know, and the kids want to go outside and play, but, you know, this is the only time I have. so much and you I'm so excited for you to be my music teacher retirement how long are you going to do this well if you talk to my wife she says I'm never going to retire uh, I, 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 either next year or the year after okay I mean I'm gonna be 71 and 72, I mean, I, a board member one time, a couple of years ago, she had a kid. She said, I can't wait till my kid gets you. And I said, you want your kid to be taught by some guy in his 80s? Don't you think you deserve someone younger than that? I mean, it's, it's great. I mean, I, I feel very blessed with that, you know, that they're not trying to kick me out. But it's going to be hard when I leave here. This, this, is, this place is in my blood. This isn't a job. This is, this is me. It really is, you know? And I'm very lucky to be able to say that, too. So uh, I've, I really think that what I've had here, I would never be able to duplicate anywhere else. You know? That's why it's hard to leave here. If I was teaching math, if I was teaching English and stuff, that's one thing. But this is me. I'm a musician. 
How do you walk away from yourself? Because that's how I feel like if I walk away from here, I'm walking away from me. You know? Thank you.